Welcome to the Travel Media Lab podcast. I'm your host, Yulia Denisuk, an award-winning travel photographer and writer, entrepreneur, community builder, and a firm believer that every one of us can go after the stories we've always wanted to tell with the right support, encouragement, and structure. I'm on a mission to help women's storytellers everywhere break into and thrive in the travel media space. If you're ready to ditch your fears to the side, grow your knowledge and confidence, and publish your travel stories, you're in the right place. Let's go. Welcome back, everyone. We are taking the month of June off to rest here at the Travel Media Lab podcast, and we will be returning with fresh season six episodes for you in July. Until then, I'd like to share with you a few conversations that we regularly have in The Circle, our membership in which we help you get your stories published with ongoing support, encouragement, opportunities, and a community as you establish yourself in the travel media space. In this bonus episode, I'm sharing with you a conversation we had earlier this year about networking in the industry. I had just returned from the annual Travel Media IMM conference, and I was sharing my learnings and reflections with our members. We dedicated a whole hour discussing networking strategies and tips and travel media, and in today's episode, I share with you a part of that discussion. This whole conversation and all of our workshops and calls, in addition to all the support and community that we offer are available to you when you join us over at travelmedialab.com slash circle. At the end of this episode, I gave our Circle members homework that's related to the theme we're discussing here, networking in travel media. And I want to encourage you to go ahead and take that homework to heart too, to advance your own career and path in travel media. And before we get started today, I wanted to share with you a recent review we got on our podcast from someone called Selfie Reviewer that says, I just finished listening to the first three episodes. I'm really inspired by the interviews and Yulia's personal stories as well. I'm excited to get insights from so many different perspectives of travel professionals in the industry. Thank you so much, Selfie Reviewer, for taking the time to share your thoughts with us. And if you're listening right now and if you enjoy our podcast, I really, really hope that you can go to your podcast platform right now and share your thoughts. I look at every single review we get. They're really, really important to us. And who knows, maybe I'll be reading your review on the podcast next. Thank you so much. All right, let's get into this episode. So what we're going to dedicate the month of February to, and selfishly, it's because I just got off of the conference last week. It's very fresh in my mind. So I want to uh, share, share this with you, uh, is the, the theme and the idea of networking. Uh, networking in this industry, how do we do it? You know, what are some best practices of doing it? And by the way, there is homework um, at the end of today. So yes, yeah, so as you guys know, I went to IMM Travel Media last week. It was another really good event. And honestly, I think they, they, they couldn't have done it better considering all the circumstances, right? A lot of people were thinking, well, it's, you know, and myself included, I, I thought they should have done it virtually because last year virtually it, it went very well. Um, but they decided to, I think they couldn't back out of the convention center, uh, you know, deposit or whatever that they paid. So they decided to keep it in person. And yeah, and considering all the circumstances, it, it was very well run. There is something to be said about speaking to somebody in person, really like the magic of that and the impression that you make, even though you're in a mask. You just cannot compare with the Zoom calls. It just once again proved it to me that, you know, in person, person to person interactions in person are really important. And that's why networking works, right? That's why it works in every industry. When you make those personal connections, when you really uh, discover some, you know, something that you share with the other person, then that other person, let's say it's a tourism board representative, will be even that much more excited to work with you and to send you an email and follow up, et cetera, et cetera editors as well, right? I didn't get to see any editors this time around, but I saw a lot of people sort of schmoozing to the editors and be like, hey, remember me? (laughs) I didn't do any, I was, I don't know, I was so behind everything, you know, and with the Nanjigo class and everything, like I was just so behind that I, I 
because usually you try to like line up some meetings with the editors because like sorry i'm jumping all over the place but uh with the travel media events it's very structured right so it's like these 15 minute uh, speed networking appointments that you have and before the event happens you put your preferences so who is in your top preference middle preference you know low preference and you sort of sort everybody into those buckets both the tourism boards do it and we do it and then we sort of see how it matches up right so it's like tinder <laughs> we see if we both like each other and you know and then we get matched up kind of thing uh, but editors are not part of that process even though they do come to the conference right so a lot of times people try to line up meetings with the editors ahead of the conference or bef- after the conference like little coffee chat introductions get to know each other and to be honest it never occurred to me that you could do that you know it never occurred to me which just goes to show that maybe i shouldn't be doing this workshop because i'm, I'm not like a networking guru or something um but i saw a few of my friends that i knew that i know uh, in the industry they do they did it not last year because it was virtual but the year before when we went in 2020 just before the the pandemic and i was like where are you going and it's like oh i have this coffee chat with the Condé Nast traveler editor i'm like what <laughs> so what i'm trying to say here is that there are many different ways in which we can apply networking if you remember an episode with oh goodness and of course i'm i'm, I'm blanking on her name but we had a photographer uh based in uh nancy nancy lova based in britain and she was talking about how she sends dms to to all these magazine instagram accounts and they reply and, and you know and she introduces herself and she asks you know who is the right person to be in touch with etc so she uses instagram as an avenue for networking and again and when she told me that on the podcast, I was like, what? You can do that? Uh, listen to that episode if, if you'd like to refresh on Nancy's story. But again, the point here is that the point of networking, what is the point of networking? It's not to send your pitch, right? It's not if you are sending your pitch at your, you know, uh, happy hour networking event with somebody, or if you're pitching somebody at that event, that's the wrong way to go about networking, right? The point of networking is to establish a connection. The point of networking is to introduce yourself, is to tease uh, perhaps what you're working on. And then you follow up with the actual pitch or with the actual proposal later on in an email and so on and so forth. And uh, you can do that in so many different ways. And some people are really creative. They do it via Instagram. They set up coffee chats with editors ahead of conferences. They just reach out to editors in general and say, hey, I'm in your town. Imagine the audacity, right? Uh, but of course, it's not audacity because, again, let's put this, let's take the editors off the pedestal. They're, they're humans just like us. But sometimes people do that, too. I've never done it, but sometimes people do it. They send an email and say, hey, I'll be in New York for a week next week. I'd love to meet for, for a coffee and introduce myself and see if we can work together. Imagine, right? So different ways that you can really utilize networking to your advantage in this industry. And what I also realized, it's been sort of growing as a snowball in the past couple of years, but this year it's really culminated. And you guys, the conversations with the tourism boards are so easy now. They are so freaking easy now. This time around, I had one tourism board. I'm not going to say which one. The rep told me, I am intimidated to talk to you. And I almost fell from my chair. I'm like, oh my God, that is very new. <laughs> what is happening here, right? So, and trust me, trust me. When I went for my first couple of conferences, the tables were very turned. Not that I was intimidated to talk to them, but that I had to prove to them that we should work together. Now they're proving to me that I should come to their destination, right? So I'm not showing this to like brag and, or say, hey, look at me, look how great I am. I'm just saying, hey, this, these conversations get easier. They definitely get easier. The bigger your portfolio grows, the, the easier those conversations get. But the other part of why these conversations are so easy right now for me is that I know what I'm looking for, very like, I'm very zeroed in on what I'm looking for. I know exactly the kinds of stories I want, right? And of course, I leave space, right? Of course, you know, I'm not just going to say only this story and that's it. But when I come into that conversation, I mean, I have this pitch now, right? Or it's not a pitch, but it's like, I, I, I know what I need to say. And I say, these are, this is who I am. These are the kind of stories I typically produce. 
this is who I typically write for and I'd love to see if there is a fit. And it's very straight and it's very easy for the tourism board to then say, ah, okay, so that's what you're looking for. Well, we have X, Y, and Z for you, right? Because you would be surprised how many people come to these conversations unprepared, meaning they come and they say, oh, I'm a travel writer. Let's work together. That is a very sort of, it's very wide open, right? Where do you go from there? And what happens in, in that conversation then, if, if that's how you open it, I'm a travel writer, let's work together. They're going to start spewing you a generic uh, load of facts about their destination, right? They're going to give you the press release, basically, because you haven't given them any, any direction to focus in. So actually, tourism boards, oh, they appreciate it so much. Like I've noticed it so much in the past couple of years that when I come in with a super directed pitch or presentation or, you know, these are the kinds of stories I'm looking for, they light up actually because it makes their job easier. They're like, oh, yeah, I know this one guy or there's this character in a region in the South that is amazing. You should talk to him. You know, they're humans too. They get excited by, by these conversations as well. So, you know, when you interact uh, with them, just have an idea of what it is that you're looking for. And again, it doesn't have to be about their region specifically, right? Uh, you're there to find out what's in their region, but in general, what kind of stories you write or you're interested in. That's really important. So it's a bit of a, like I'm talking about sort of a hybrid right now, because in one conversation, we're talking about networking, which is, you know, about introducing yourself, establishing a relationship. And I'm also talking about a more specific, like speed, that, speed dating interaction with the tourism boards where you do pitch them right there. So I hope you guys are understanding that I'm sort of covering two at once, right? If you're just showing up at a networking event or a happy hour somewhere, you wouldn't, you know, go straight into a pitch right away. You just have fun and network with people. But if you are in a setting where you are presenting yourself in that way, then that's, you know, that's really, uh, that's really important. The other thing is, and forgive me, if what I say right now, you're going to scoff at and say, Yulia, of course, so obvious, but listen, we need business cards, right? We need business cards because business cards do something for us that, I don't know, they just instantly elevate your intention. Because here's another thing that I've learned actually in this conference, this time around, I was speaking, I think it was South Africa that I was speaking to. And I showed up, I did my thing, you know, I, 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 I did my pitch and, and presented my business card. And she's like, wow, Yulia, you get six stars. What? <laughs> she's like, you are so professional. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, well, you, you can instantly see if somebody just wants to score a free trip. And there's loads of people who show up at these conferences and they just want a free trip. And I was shocked because I thought travel media, they, you know, they have a process by which you, you can just show up. You, you know, you, you have to, I know a few of you have experienced it because you applied. And anyhow, that's what she told me. She's like, you're a professional. You know what you're talking about. You know what stories you want to write. You want to see if we can work together. You know, you gave me a business card. Like, you see what I mean? So I think we also have to work a little bit against a, a bit of a stereotype that exists in the industry where there are a lot of freeloaders, actually, who just want to score a free trip. Right. So so the more we can separate ourselves from that by all of these things, by knowing our niche, by presenting ourselves in this clear way, by having a business card, a simple, tiny detail. Right. It all helps uh, immensely. And then the other thing to think about, too, is how do, how will you stand out in an event like this? You know, if it's a small, intimate networking event where there's like 25 people, great. But if it's a huge conference like the one I went to or Hannah, you went to World Trade Market in London, it's even bigger. How the heck do you stand out? Because they see probably 50 to 100 people, if not more a day. And how do you stand out from that, right? So for me, over the years, I've sort of zeroed in on how do I stand out? And I do by two things. The first one is, again, that pitch that I have in which I, I tell them that this is my niche. And I've honed my niche over the years. And they tell me, actually, this is the feedback I get from the tourism board. They're like, oh, I haven't heard that many people come and, you know, I, I haven't heard that many people looking for those kinds of stories. So when they say that, they will remember, oh, this is the girl that was looking for those artisan stories or whatever, right? So, so your niche is, is a hook as well. But the second thing I do, and that, again, may be sort of cheesy or silly, but trust me, it works. 
I have, you know, I have my business cards and I have, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, okay. You can, I don't know. So this is one of my business cards and I have, you know, every one of them. So here's the thing, but every one of them has different photographs, right? And it's very easy to do on a site called Moo moo.com recommended to everyone i don't know if it works outside of the states but check it's a really great website for i can order from them so i have i have some cards from them already oh awesome yeah i mean canada of course works. i'm not sure about the uk oh what it works for canada i'm not sure about the uk oh uh, yeah but anyhow so what i do and you don't have to repeat my trick i mean you're welcome to but you know maybe find a trick that works for you but again i do this because i'm trying to for them to remember me is, you know, I have all these different business cards from different parts of the world. And what I do is when I'm about to present my business card, and I usually do it at the end after we pitched, we talked, it's like a final thing for them to remember me with something, you know, I say, and now I have a question for you because all this time they're asking me questions, you know, now I want to give them something a little fun to relax because it, it's also an intense, right? And it's an intense day. They speak to so many people. It gets boring probably. So at the end, I'm like, and now I have a question for you. Where would you like to travel to this afternoon? Turkey, Morocco, Mongolia, Russia, or Oman? And they choose. And then I give them the business card from, you know, from, from that destination. They're like, oh, I've always wanted to come to Turkey. You see what I mean? So it's a little, it's a, it's a tiniest detail perhaps, but they remember me better because of that, because nobody else is doing that. And, you know. Usually it's pretty, pretty dry. So, and we are in the travel business, right? So let's, let's have some fun. So I'm saying this, that just think about if you're in those situations, especially if it's like a huge crowded event, how will you stand out? What will be your little tiny touch that will help them remember you? And then overall, if you look at this package, right? She knows what she's talking about. She knows her niche. She has a business card. She's not just here to, to freeload on a free trip. And, you know, she has this little touch. I mean, the chances of you working with them sh just shoot up, honestly, just, just shoot up because of all of that. And then after your networking, uh, after your events, always follow up with them and always follow up with them within one week if you can. Because after one week, it gets a bit, you know, it's not that they forget. No, of course, because, you know, they keep lists usually in the, um, in events like travel media. But it, let's say it's a ha industry happy hour that you went to. And let's say you met somebody great, a great editor, you connected with them. And let's say you sent them an email and probably they're not going to send you an email because they're probably super busy or something, right? Or, I mean, they might, but it's probably best to, to, to have the initiative. And let's say you send them an email like a week or like three weeks later or four weeks later. What does it say about your interest in, in connecting with them further, right? Not to say that it can be done, but what, what is that saying? Strike the iron while it's hot, right? Uh, just try to try to be timely with whatever it is that you're connecting on and follow up within the next one week if you can. So these are sort of my, my tips and tricks and things that I've learned and, and got reinforced this, this time around again. Uh, again, it's, it, not, not of it is super, you know, bre breakthrough stuff, but at the same time, it's all, you know, small details that really, really make a difference. So I said, I mentioned that there will be homework for us this month. And because our theme this month is networking. And the homework that I have for you guys, and I will check in on it at the end of the month, is to find one, one event, one opportunity to engage with a tourism board, to engage with an editor. So again, it can be either a tourism board or it can be an editorial side outside of the pitching. So I'm not talking about sending a pitch to somebody. No, that doesn't count. I'm saying find one opportunity, whether it's virtual, whether it's in your area, to connect with somebody in the industry and have and have a conversation, okay? And it can also be reaching out to somebody via Instagram. That counts. I will accept that as done homework. So, you know, any any way that you can find, maybe, maybe you'll have to do a little bit of research on, like Hannah, for example, I know that British Guild of Travel Writers is super active. I see their events and, you know, things happening over there all the time. So I'm sure they have plenty of opportunities coming up to do something. So yeah, so that's the homework. 
find one opportunity, one event for you to go and engage with someone in our industry, be it a tourism board, be it an editor. But again, you're not pitching. You're just networking, right? You're just presenting yourself because this homework will also be an opportunity for you to hone that pitch that I'm talking about, right? What is your pitch? Like when you're, when you're in a room with somebody and you're presenting yourself, what do you say about yourself? What are you interested in? What kinds of stories are you looking for? I think it's always good to, to keep honing that pitch and, and keep thinking about that for yourself, right? What is it that I, like, what, what kind of stories do I want? And keep pitch and keep practicing your introduction. And, you know, I, I write for X, Y, and Z or et cetera. Okay. So that's the homework. And I'm really excited to see what you guys can come up with. Thanks again for listening to our bonus episode today. I hope you found the conversation we had here relevant, inspiring, and useful to you. If you're looking for support, opportunities, and community in the travel media space, consider joining us in The Circle, where we have conversations like this one on a regular basis. Visit travelmedialab.com circle to learn more. Thanks again for listening and stay tuned for another bonus episode coming your way next week.